What's up everyone? This is Brian from the Exact IT Solutions YouTube channel and welcome to another video where we try to help you and educate you around the things that are impacting you with cybersecurity and all the crazy things that cyber criminals are doing out there. And today, I haven't had a chance to do a video in a while because things have just been insane with the amount of cyber attacks and things that we've been dealing with here at our company, helping people uh, with the challenges around cybersecurity and these cyber events. So as much as I'd love to get a video out, multiple videos out a week, it's been a real challenge to get these videos out because we've just been crazy busy uh, with work and helping people uh, you know, deal with ransomware or get, get prepared to deal with ransomware. Um, it's been more helping people get prepared and, and, and shore up their cyber defenses than it has been helping people with hacks, thankfully. Um, but there's been no shortage of, shortages of hacks out there, and we're going to go through that today, along with what the White House and the Biden administration is recommending that businesses start doing in a memo that they released today. Um, before I jump into that, remember, I don't get paid directly from this channel. If you're seeing ads, it's because you don't subscribe to YouTube Premium, and YouTube is showing you ads because you're watching their platform for free. We don't run any ads. We don't charge any money for our content. We don't put sponsors on here. And I don't bore you with all these ads in between certain segments of this content. What I do give you is really good, concise cybersecurity information that you can use not only in your own life, but in your business or where what have you because this stuff is prevalent and it's happening everywhere so just remember to hit the like button smash it down for us it helps other people find this content it has nothing to do with me and whether or not you like my stuff or not quite frankly i really don't care but i do want other people to find this stuff and the only way that google will promote it and show it to other people is if you hit the like button so Help spread the word about cybersecurity. Hit the like button. Share out our video if you're so inclined. There's a little share button down there. You can click it, share it out to your, your friends and family and your social media and get them educated as well. So today from the top down, we're going to talk about the uh, Revel attack against the meatpacking company, uh, JBS. We're going to jump into Fujifilm who got hit uh, yesterday and the New York MTA and the Boston uh, uh ferry steamship authority it's basically the boston's ferry uh they got hit with ransomware all this week as well uh, and then we're going to quickly jump into some of the things that the biden administration thinks you can do and i'm going to give you my opinion on some of those things fairly quickly so uh, without further ado make sure you hit the like button and let's get into today's content All right, so right up on the screen here, jumping right into it. Um, it's no secret at this point, JBS, this company that supplies a significant portion of the meat and chicken and poultry uh, or chicken and pork supply in the United States was hit with a cyber attack, specifically ransomware by this group named Revel. Um, and what they have done is they have gone ahead and locked up their systems and, and brought their businesses to a screeching halt and brought fears on to the uh, economic community and the U.S. citizens that their meat supply may be in jeopardy because of this ransomware attack. And again, this isn't anything new that I haven't talked about on this channel. This is another supply chain attack where a supplier is now affecting, uh, just like we saw with the Colonial Pipeline, these supply chain attacks affect different uh, businesses, different industries, and in this case, your grocery store. You're not gonna have meat in the shelves if something like this happens, just like you weren't gonna have gas at the gas pump when Colonial Pipeline got hacked. Now, these types of supply chain hacks happen all the time. It's just that they don't bubble up to the surface of it affecting what's on your dinner table or whether or not you can put fuel in your car. And that's when it be begins to become a problem for a lot of people is when it impacts their lives and they can't go about their lives like they normally would. Um, I take issue with this because number one, there have been a lot of cyber attacks that in my opinion are far more impactful, far worse than what we're seeing here 
yet these are the ones that trigger action from the White House and from government officials and things like that. Um, I liken it to, you know, a lot of the things we see around gun control when we're in the midst of these things. Uh, people seem to get upset and want to do things, but then as time passes and these aren't on the front line, front, or on the front page of the headlines of the news, then people seem to forget about them. And action from Washington uh, and our elected officials seems to slow down. That's just the history of what I've seen and the reality of stuff. But we need to be taking this stuff more seriously because these woeful cybersecurity practices that these companies have and the way that they think they should be doing cybersecurity is completely misguided, completely wrong, and that's why we're seeing all these cyber attacks. So uh, it looks like JBS is getting back up and running. Um, I'll link to a video I was featured in NTD News. Uh, I'll link to a video down below so you can see that. I was interviewed and I gave my opinion on uh, NTD News last night uh, regarding this particular attack and what I think is, is going on. So. Um, moving right along, we have Fuji Films. They became the latest victim of a network crippling ransomware attack. And the Japanese multinational conglomerate has been forced to shut down part of its global network after falling victim to a suspected ransomware attack. And this is obviously Fuji Film, known for their digital emitting products, but they also produce things like high-tech medical uh, kits, including devices for rapid processing of COVID-19 tests. Um, so they don't just make films for cameras and stuff like that. They're involved in a wide array of enterprise level um, things that involve imaging, right? So we're talking about, you know, hospitals. We're talking about anything that you think of where imaging is involved. Fuji Film probably has a hand in that because they don't just deal in consumer products. Um, again, Fuji's keeping tight-lipped on further details such as the identity of the ransomware uh, used in the attack. Um, and, it, uh, and Bleeping Computer is reporting that the company's servers have been infected by Qbot. Um, so we don't know what's going on here. They are keeping things tight-lipped. And hopefully they, they get out of this seriously, but this is just another example in the last week of another major company getting hit. Um, and I'm gonna, I can show you some things in a few minutes um, that might be interesting to you to show you the level of how much this is happening out there because these are the ones that make the news. These are the big companies. There's a lot of little companies out there as well, right? So we have the Steamship Authority uh, for, um, for Boston, right? This is basically our public transportation uh, in, in the ocean and around Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyards and Nantucket. They were hit by a ransomware attack. The ferries are still running, uh, but the passengers need to bring cash. So there are systems that are, are down. There, is a, there, there are things being affected here um, and people will need to conduct business in a different way if they wanna ride this public transportation. Uh, system up in Boston, another example of another ransomware attack. Um, interestingly enough, the other day it came out that the MTA in New York was breached by hackers in April. Now this was a little bit of a different flavor. Um, I've mentioned to uh, people in the past and other news reporters who I won't name here um, that there are two very distinct modus of operandi for Russian hackers and Chinese hackers. Um, Russian hackers really like to make money and really like to deploy ransomware and make money off of people. Chinese hackers, they get into people's systems and they don't seem to, to deploy ransomware anywhere nearly as frequently as Russian as Russian based hackers, right? So, and they're not the only two major countries that do this stuff, but they are. Um, so, you know, the reality of it is, is the Chinese, they like to get into networks and they like to just hang around and spy and look at things and see how maybe how further they can go or what else they can get into. And that was the case here uh, with New York. Now, the FBI, what's interesting here is two things. The FBI reached out to them around April 20th and told them they were among several agencies targeted in a widespread hacking campaign. Now, the MTA is saying it's suspected that this intrusion was the result of what's known as a zero day, which is a vulnerability that is yet to be patched either for soft, from the software developer or the manufacturer. 
So, um, you know, that's a cop out, number one, because yes, it was a zero day. But if you think about what was going on around the time of all this and the FBI getting involved in the Microsoft Exchange uh, hack, um, yes, there was no patch prior to the vulnerability. But when the vulnerability was out in the wild and discovered, Microsoft provided a patch for it. And this is kind of like the MTA saying, well, like we got hacked because nobody knew about it. Well, it, by April 20th, everybody knew about it. Your stuff just wasn't patched. That's the reality. Um, it also goes on to say that this is something that is highly unusual to see in the hacker space. That is not true at all. Zero days and there's security researchers both on the good side and the bad side that are constantly finding this stuff and constantly reporting this stuff. And it's not highly unusual anymore. It used to be three or four years ago, but there are way more people with the right skills and the right experience to know how to do hacks like this and go further with their attacks. The other problem is, is that the good guy security researchers are usually met with uh, not so great, not they're not welcomed with the you know warm open arms like oh come and tell us what your what you found that's a, a vulnerability in our product. What is actually happening is these really good security researchers that are trying to let these companies know that they have these problems are being met with skepticism and they're being met with the fact that people they, they they are being met with the fact that these these guys are being thought of as people who are just looking to get their name out there looking for publicity and not doing this for the right reasons which is securing everybody and securing these products that are, that are being put out with these vulnerabilities now there is an element of sens sens sensationalization going on in that space but it's not as prevalent as you would think the bigger problem is in my opinion that most of these it people have god complexes and when they're met with somebody who shows them that their product or their service has a problem then that ego gets in the way of what really needs to be done and those people working together to solve these problems so hopefully things change in in the cybersecurity world and in the and in the tech world that these security researchers are not met with such resistance and not met with such skepticism because you're going to turn these guys off from doing what they do um, or you're going to make yourself look really bad in the long run when the truth comes out about what people knew and when they knew it. So just a word of caution there for the people in the tech space that watch this channel. Um, there are no known patches for these vulnerabilities, and as a result, using this vulnerability kind of tips the hand of the attacker. While that's true, and prior to a certain date, that was accurate, but the time that they found the exchange hack, and I'm going to assume that that's what was going on here, is that the exchange server being used by the MTA was hacked, and the FBI saw it, saw the uh, web shell in their server, and decided to contact them and tell them, hey, you got hit here. Um, you know, there was a patch released after the fact. And when the FBI actually got involved, that was well after the patch was released by Microsoft. So um, a little, you know, schematics with the timeline here. But to me, this seems like somebody who's trying to cover their own butts uh, for something that needed to come out because you have to report this kind of stuff uh, when you're a public entity. So... Jumping into my last topic here today, folks, uh, trying to keep this video a little short, um, I want to talk about the memo that came out from the Biden administration on what businesses should be doing to prevent ransomware. And they give you these five things that you, you should be doing. So I'm going to jump into these a little bit and give you my opinion on them. Uh, so back up your data, system images and configurations and regularly test them and keep the backups offline. That's all great advice, right? But backups aren't going to save your you from ransomware anymore. Starting in early 2020, these ransomware uh, cyber criminals started changing their tactics and what they are doing now and every ransomware event that I've looked at, which is almost every single one that has happened uh, since the, uh, early 2020, Almost all of them have had data exfiltration involved. And what that means is, is now you're susceptible to something known as double extortion. 
And what happens is, is they, re they take the files before they encrypt them and they offload them to their own servers. And now they have them in their possession. So when you think you're going to turn to the cyber criminals and say, ha, I'm not going to pay you because I have everything in backups over here and I don't need your, you know, your tool to unencrypt the data that you've encrypted on my system. Um, they're going to come back at you and say, well, not so fast. We stole your data and now we're going to release it if you don't pay us. We're going to release it to the public or we're going to let your customers know that we have certain information about them that maybe we shouldn't have and maybe they'd be a little upset if they knew we had it. And they look for this data to hold it over your head or your customers' heads uh, so that they can use that as leverage in order to get paid. So backups work. Backups are critical, especially when you're talking about disaster recovery. But when you're talking about a specific thing like a ransomware attack, you need to be mindful that data exfiltration is a thing and double extortion is something that you're going to have to deal with when dealing with a ransomware attack in 2021. So just be mindful of that. Backups are good. You need to have them. Everything that they say there, I, I agree with, but just be warned that that will not prevent you from having to pay these cyber criminals due to the double extortion that I mentioned. Update patch systems, uh, update and patch systems promptly. This includes maintaining the security of operating systems, applications, and firmware in a timely manner. So I'm gonna cut down that first part right there. Yes, your Windows operating systems, your Linux operating systems, your Mac operating systems, or whatever flavor of operating system you use needs to be updated regularly. You also need to update the software applications that you install. Somebody, There should be a process or somebody should be responsible for making sure that you're not running old and outdated software and that somebody is keeping up with the fact that manufacturers and software developers are putting out these updates. Not all software alerts you when an update needs to be done. So somebody needs to make sure that they're going and checking and doing the right things to make sure that you're not running out of date software that's leaving you uh, at a higher risk for getting hacked or having ransomware. And finally, Firmware. Firmware is the operating systems of all the devices on your networks, your TVs, your phones, uh, you know, your, your cameras, your, your smart devices, your Alexas, your Google Homes, your, your uh, Amazon Fires. These all have things that run called firmware and all of these firmwares need to be updated. Now, a lot of these tools tell you when the firmware needs to be updated. A lot of them don't. Um, so like if you buy a smart light bulb, it's not going to send you an alert that says, hey, there's a new firmware update. You probably need to go into the app and check that there's a firmware update or run a router on your home network or run a tool on your business network that scans these devices and looks for vulnerabilities. That's a better way to handle it. Um, or looks for out-of-date firmware and tells you, hey, this firmware has a vulnerability, you might want to check for an update. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can tackle it, but they want you to consider using a centralized patch management system and using a risk-based assessment strategy to drive your patch management program, which is perfect. However, easier said than done in two sentences. This means you're going to have to work with somebody who has these tools and knows how to use them, or you're gonna to have to acquire them yourself and hire and train the talent to use the tools. At this stage of the game, if you're not doing this, you wanna outsource this right now. There are plenty of companies out there that can handle this for you. They do this every day. My company, Exact IT Solutions, we do this every day for companies, and we manage this stuff and we manage their risk for them so they understand uh, and, and have a plan in place for getting this stuff updated so they don't end up having systems that are not patched and not done properly. So um, next thing they go into is testing your incident response plan. Um, your incident response plan needs to be tested 100%, but I'm gonna tell you right now, most of the businesses that I deal with and I talk to, they don't even care or want to have or want to put two cents into making an incident response plan. The, the percentages of business that actually have one of these things are very, very low compared to the ones that, that don't. I mean, the ones that don't are astronomical. We Almost every business I talk to that's not a client of ours, 
I asked them to, to give me their incident response plan or uh, talk to me about their incident response plan, and they just don't have one. It's not something that they ever considered in their business. Now, an incident response plan is not only necessary to have, but it also protects you from other things besides cyber attacks and ransomware. So it's important that you understand that. So develop that incident response plan. If you don't know how to do it, hire an expert that can help you with that. We help companies develop incident response plans all the time. Um, that's basically all we're doing uh, in the last you know, 18 months is, is making sure that incident response plans reflect the business properly, that they're up to date and that they're valid. And then we work on a plan to getting to testing. Now, the first thing you wanna do when you get to the point of testing is sit around with all of your decision makers and stakeholders and do what's known as a tabletop exercise. A tabletop exercise will allow you to just verbally figure out if something makes sense or not and allow the people in charge of each department in your organization to have input on whether or not it makes sense from their perspective and make adjustments accordingly. And then finally, you wanna do a full blown fire drill when you're fully prepared for this. Now this may take you years to get to the point where you can actually do a full blown fire drill and really test your cyber resilience, but it's necessary and, and this is the path you need to get on in order to you know, protect yourself from things like ransomware and be able to not cause a problem in your business or in the supply chain that your business is a part of. So. Check your security team's work. Use a third-party pen tester to test the security of your systems and your ability to defend against sophisticated attacks. Absolutely 100%. Whether you hire your own employees for IT or whether you use an outside company, you absolutely want to make sure that you are hiring a third party to make sure that what you think is actually happening is actually happening. And that's really why you want to do this. It's not a gotcha against your IT people or the IT company you work with. They should be welcoming something like this so they can learn where they have blind spots and they have gaps and you can fill those gaps because the goal here is, is to protect the company and protect the organization and make sure that we're looking at cybersecurity as a team sport from the C-level all the way down. So absolutely 100% make sure you're getting to the point where you can bring in a third party to assess your situation. My company has done that on its own. We went and got auditors to come out and we got the CompTIA Security Plus Trust Mark certification, which only 30 companies in the world actually have. And that proves, and we've been audited against, the NIST cybersecurity framework that we follow and adhere to all the controls that are inside of the United States government framework for doing cybersecurity the right way. And that's a big deal. So, and the final thing here is segment your networks. And this is huge. Um, keeping the accounting department and the marketing team away from the computers that deliver your products and services is a really, really smart idea. Just figuring out who you can separate from the operations you know, your admin staff, your support staff, you know, those the systems and the processes and the people that make you money, you know, that deliver the core products that you're being paid for and the reason you're in business. And then you have all these supporting roles in your company like accounting, accounts payable, accounts receivable, marketing, sales. Do they really need to have any access or do their computers need to really talk to the main core function of your business? If not, move them away, isolate them, set, set them apart. And really good IT companies can help you work your system so they still have access to the important areas and the certain areas, but not so much access that if they had a problem on their system, it's going to take down your whole operation. And that's the idea. You don't want you know Sally in the accounting department who clicked on a phishing link you know, who really is is just there to send out bills and doesn't do anything more than that, to be the person who took down your whole entire, you know, manufacturing or production operation. So I hope you found this help helpful, folks. This is really good stuff that the um, Biden administration has put out. Um, really consider doing what I've laid out here for you. And if you have any questions, 
You can always drop them below in the comments or you can head over to our website at xitx.com and head over to the contact us button at the top right and just send us a message on whatever's on your mind. Somebody from my team will reach out to you and give you some advice on whatever it is you have a question about or whatever it is you're dealing with in regards to cybersecurity or tech. Mainly where we want to help you with cybersecurity because that's what this channel is about. So if you're watching this, uh, hopefully you have some interest in protecting your company or yourself when it comes to cyber criminals and you know all the craziness that's going on out there. So if you made it this far in the video, I thank you so much. You're a huge super fan. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And remember, hit that like button and share us out to your friends and family. That's all for me for today, folks. I'll see you soon. Take care.